Welcome back to another episode of the Meteor Mechanic. In the last video, we cleaned up our farm a little bit, put some lights on it. We started building the house over or our the foundation for our house over there. We also do have the spud gun, and I got some ammo. So what I think I want to do is I think I'm gonna try to make an automated watering system if possible. Because watering these things, watering this thing with a bucket is becoming very tedious. An automated watering system will just make your life so much easier. You literally just press a switch and everything gets watered. Because our farm's so small. What is it 20 it's only 20 crops i could actually probably make it a little bit bigger so let me go see what i need i know that you definitely are going to need a water cannon and you're going to need at least one piston to push it for what the way i'm going to build it and we're probably going to need a water container so let's see what we need to make real quick and we got the water cannon is here so water cannon, of course they require component kits. So we need we need component kits and I'm gonna need beeswax apparently. Do I not have any beeswax? So I need to get beeswax and component kits. And then we're gonna need that for the water container as well. And then what else do we need? We need a piston. Can we make a piston right now? We need a component kit for that. We, have oil. we do have oil and we need more metal. Okay, so. It's pretty clear. We need component kits. I need to go loot some buildings. All right, I decided to go off-road a little bit, and the reason I did that is because I saw this giant hay field over here, or wheat field, whatever it is. So there's a couple things you're going to find in these wheat fields. There's usually a lot of hay bots, and there's usually a lot of cows, and there's usually corn. And the buildings in them like this, this will typically end up having a decent amount of loot in it, because look how big it is. And because there's hay bots surrounding it all around, there's a good chance we're going to get a decent amount of scrap metal as well as getting some component kits. That's exactly what we need right now. So let's get away from our car. Oh no. He's attacking the car. Stop it. Hopefully we don't back into one. All right, we killed that guy. We're going to have to shoot these guys. There's too many of them. Oh my God, they're all coming. Oh, they're running in a straight line. That's good. Oh no, I backed into my car. Okay, how much ammo do we have left? I used like 20 of my ammo. But I tried to I tried to be as safe as possible there, so as you can see, the tote bots are a plenty inside of these wheat fields. Hopefully we got at least a component kit from them since we killed like six of them. So again, this is also a great place to get milk. If the haybots have not killed all the cows, you can actually find a ton of corn, and there's usually a bunch of cows. You can get milk really quickly, which you probably should do as also. Also, all right, we got one component kit. That's better than zero. So we'll clean this scrap metal up on the way down. Let's make sure there's no loot crates on the ground because I have not actually looted this building before. As you can see, this hay is piled up here. So sometimes there's crates on the ground down here. Nothing there. All right, so we're gonna make our way up. I want to say that most of them probably came out because there were like three of them rushing me that were not on the ground. So I want to, I'm going to hope that they actually came from out of this building and there's not like five more of them in here. There's one there. There's two right here. Brilliant. Maybe we can get lucky and have them fall down the steps. This guy falls down the steps. He fell. We can save our ammo. If I can hit him, I missed him. Oh, geez, I whiffed. No component kit. Yikes. Okay. Bam. Clean all this up on the way down. This is another reason why, like, I, I've actually found playing on the multiplayer world over on Twitch with my friends that having a resource collector on your car when you're driving around, when possible, is going to be make it much faster to loot because if I want to actually stop and refine all of this, all these scrap, scrap spines that are dropping, it's going to take a long time. So if I could have a resource collector on my car, which I'll do at some point in the future, It'll just make it much easier to uh, to loot because I can just pick them all up and not have to worry about. Are you going to jump down the steps with me? That'd be great. Come on, fall. He did fall. Thank you. Cooperated very nicely. And there's another one. Is that another one? And he didn't fall. Will you fall, please? Don't break. No, he broke the spine. They one hit the spines. The spines must have one durability. Or two. I don't know. Now, they're not one because I can't break them with my hammer, but they can break them, so they must be like two or three durability. Okay, is that all of them here? 
like I said, this building, these build, this building particular, this layout, because the buildings, the buildings have like, there's only so many different layouts. I don't think they're random. This looks really familiar to me, because I've seen buildings like this in other worlds, and typically they have a lot of loot in them. And it'll be much easier to see the next time I come here because none of this hay will be here because they don't pile the hay up once you clear it. But we are on the hunt for component kits again so we can make ourselves a watering system. We're getting a lot of chemicals which we do not need, I don't believe. The chemicals are for making concrete. Whoops, I fell. Also, let's do an ammo check. I only have 26 ammo. I gotta start being careful because... We should have like a decent sized raid also. Like as you can see, look at all these crates here. Nice, we're getting a lot of component kits. That's what we need. There's probably another guy up here maybe. Hopefully only one. Maybe not. We got lucky. I oh nice, we got a gold crate. Component kits, please. One component kit. We got a logic gate and some dirt. Oh, a sun shake is perfect. We do need food. Excellent. Is that nine component kits? Is that how many we got so far? Yeah, we got nine component kits so far, which is cool. Uh, what other food do I have? We have a sun shake. Let's keep all our food down here. I should probably keep the ammo down here just, in, just so I know exactly how much I have. Because I want to try to be... Kind of frugal with it if possible. Oh, that was a big drop. Yikes. Okay, we're going to refine this metal real quick. Because I definitely want the metal. Okay, so we cleaned up all the scrap metal. And what I'm thinking about doing is normally when I do a watering system, I kind of... I normally try to make it cover like one water cannon per per row of dirt. But in the case of what we have now, because we're not, because we're at a, like component kits are not the easiest to get at the beginning of the game. Not that they're, they're not, they're not, they're basically there. You have to go farm them. And I don't want to spend like three or four days farming component kits to build a bunch of water cans. What I think I'm going to do, and I'm kind of getting far away here. I got to be careful because I don't know what's actually around here. Um, I want to make sure that I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piston, so I only have to use two water cannons instead of instead of four. That's probably what I want to do, because basically what I would normally do is just have the water cannons uh, move down the line. Also, I got to get back before. How much time do we have? All right, we should have time to do this building. Then I got to get back for that other raid. Normally what I have is I have the water cannons, I just have the watering system move down, move across the across the soil, and then it just waters, each cannon waters one line of soil at a time. But because component kits, until I get more component kits, although I guess we can see what we get from this building, I'm thinking the more efficient way is going to be is just use a single piston that lets me have two water cannons instead of four. The water cannons will go down water and then I'll press the, a switch that activates the piston that pushes the system over by one button. Oh nice, we got ammo. Nope, that got back most of the ammo we just used, which is pretty good. So I think that might actually be the best way of doing it for now before we can make it better. But you know, we never, you never know, we could get really lucky and just get a bunch of component kits in this building. I think we had nine when we started. That's awesome. If we get one per container, I'm happy. Oh, jeez, I didn't even see him. And I'm almost starving again. Food is becoming an issue at this point. I'm not, I gotta start planting more crops. Oh, good, we got a blueberry. All right, let's eat. We're living the survival life here, just scrounging by with what we can get. Sometimes there's a crate over here, there is not. After we clear this building, I'm going to go back to the farm because we're going to get a raid. What I think I'm going to do is I haven't done it before. Typically up to this point, the videos have been one day in game as an episode. But because we've gotten past like the really early stuff, 
I think it's probably going to be better if I start doing two days. If I start combining two days into one video. Maybe even three, depending on what's going on. Just so I make sure something happens. Because if all I'm doing is running around and looting buildings, I am making progress, but that's not going to be, like, meaningful progress. So I'll probably end up editing out some of the looting that I'm doing here. And just kind of recapping it. But we're getting a ton of component kits. Jeez. Look at all these boxes in this building. This is actually amazing. I don't care about this soil, honestly, but we're going to take it because we do need to make a bigger farm at some point. We're getting a metric ton of loot here. How many component kits do we have? 17 already. We've only done two buildings. Now, there's usually one up here. I probably have the seat. Is the seat in my inventory? Of course it's not. I always have a toilet seat in my car. I forget to put it in my inventory. That's okay. There's usually a box up here. And it may or may not have something useful in it, but it's worth checking out. There is one. Uh, can we make this jump a bit? It had a component kit in it, so it was worth it that time. Sometimes it has, like, basically useless stuff. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to refine the, lit, the spines down here, and then we're going to head on back to the farm. We did manage to pull eight, 18 component kits from the two buildings and then the surrounding wheat field, so... That was pretty solid, I'm not going to lie. That should be enough to do two water cannons and a water container. And I think the pistons that I need. Because I don't really need... Oh god, there's a farm bot over there. I didn't even see him. Okay, so I am not going to engage this guy because I have not even close to enough ammo. There's actually a farm bot right there. So this guy takes 58 shots. I can't... I didn't even see him. I gotta... I'm going to go around this way. Alright, so that's the first farm bot. We are not going to even... Look at him. We don't even want to get his attention. You have to get pretty close for him to for them to aggro, but they do move around. So he's not going to stand there. He's not going to stand still. But I was wandering around this building earlier, care, like completely carefree, not worrying about anything. We definitely don't want to have uh, have an encounter with him until we have a lot more ammo. And typically, you want to kind of give yourself like you don't just want to run up to him and shoot him. You want to kind of shoot him from far away and then just keep backing up and shooting him. But you want to make sure you have a lot more ammo than fifty eight. I would typically probably want to have, like, at least 100, just in case some of the shots miss or, for some reason, they don't register. So I think that's everything. I think I got all the spines that are over here. What is this dude doing? I don't even know where he is. Where is he? He must be on the other side of the building. All right, well, we're not going to mess with him, so let's hop in our car and get ourselves back to the mechanic station. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do for this episode. I'm going to combine two days into one because we did make some progress. We ran into a farm bot, so there was some stuff going on, but it was certainly not that much. But we want to build a watering system. So how many, what are we getting here? That's it? There's no way. Is there really only two tote bots? Jeez. What a, how anticlimactic was that? I thought we were going to get slammed. Okay, well, we got food. Uh, how much ammo do we get now? Ammo. With the fifth, I'm back at exactly 55 ammo. Isn't that cute? Okay, so let me see what I need to make the watering system. All right, so we just got back. I did find a little bit more beeswax on the way back, which was cool. So I have my... What do we have? We have the water container, right? So we have the water container. We need at least two water cannons. And we need some pistons. Did I get any... I don't have any component kits, right? Oh, I do have more. Oh, I have more component kits. I have 20 component kits. I might actually be able to make more water cannons. I prefer to be able to water it. So once those blocks are made, we just need to make... I make three of them right now. I need seven more to make... Five more beeswax. I have one more beeswax. I need six more beeswax. I'm gonna go find six beeswax. Because I prefer to be able to have actually you know what? No, let's let's just use two. Let's use two. That way I can make I can show how to use less water cannons, because it's actually be better anyway. So we got this, we got this. We're gonna plop these in here. And Okay. So to make water cannons, we need one, two water cannons. We're going to need two pistons. That's perfect. We have exactly enough metal, metal too. And then 
We're just gonna need wood to build with. Do I have wood in my inventory? I need more wood than that, probably. We're back to having an inventory disaster here. We're gonna start cleaning this inventory up again. There's just stuff everywhere. Like, we're not gonna use, let's just take the blocks out. Uh, well, like, the cheap blocks can stay in here. Kona kits. I need this. I need a switch to turn it on. Actually, I need two switches. I need one to turn it on. I need one to turn it on and one to move it. So that'll be that. I don't... I'm going to have to probably upgrade the piston also. I'm not sure how far it goes on level one. We're definitely going to need... Um, I could probably use this to make the railing. Does that have low friction? Let's see what the friction is. Friction of three... Yeah, let's make the railing out of that. So, what's this stuff doing? We're going to get... We got our one water cannon. Need that. We need that. We do not need paint right now. We don't need the paint gun. Um, uh, I definitely don't need this stuff. The chemicals down here. Need more chest already. Uh, water cannon number two. So, we got two water cannons. We need one switch got this. I'm sorry, we actually need three switches. We need another switch also. Let's craft ourselves another switch and we might have to go rob our house again, honestly, because we're going to need we're definitely going to need more wood to build this watering system. We have enough daylight to make it. I think a level one piston should be enough for one, for the when, when I move it over. That should be plenty. I think. Is that it? This sends two switches. Then we're going to head on over there and start throwing this thing together. So while there are pipes in the game, you do not have to have pipes to connect a watering system. You just need to have... You just need to have any block attached to it. Whoops, I didn't want that. So we're going to have this. Actually, I probably should... You know what? Let's do this. Let's have it get buried into the ground. So it's in the ground and then we'll have this come off so what we want is we want to have the water container here then we want to have the this here and then we want to have this so we're going to have you're going to you basically want to have the water container facing down probably it doesn't really matter is the, can the pump go under here probably not so let's make it vertically or horizontally Okay, we need to build this different. I need to have the wood go further out. I need it to go like down in the water. Like this. You can make it look prettier than this, but it doesn't really matter. Easiest thing to do is just do this. Okay, so that's there. Placing that there. We want to make sure that's facing in. We're going to put a switch here. Switch goes to that. And then we just turn it on, and it's going to start sucking the water in. Now, one thing is when you're not using this, when you're actually when you're not actually using it, make sure you turn it off. So we're going to let it fill up. It's only going to fill up to a hundred, which is going to be more than enough water here. And we're getting dangerously close to being past midnight again. So what I would do would be to have let's get this off of here. Let's do this. This here. So it would come, the piston would push it out, so it'll push it across, but then we wanted to have it possibly come over, so I'm thinking this is what I need to do. This here, then put that there, that's exactly what I needed. Then we put the other piston here, then we put the block out, I want to make sure it's not, I want to make sure it's not, um, too far out, so we got to build a bar across here. Now we're gonna have to add a sensor at some point. I think I actually do have a sensor over there. If I don't, I might have to craft a sensor. You can manually water it the first time anyway. It doesn't really matter. And then you want to wind the water cannons up. Wind the water cannons up like this. You want to make sure they're over the plot, so it doesn't really matter. Whoops, I didn't face it right. 
That's not facing right. It needs to face down. That's fine. Is that over the plot? Okay, that'll go down like that. And then we probably can do this one here. That'll go down like that. And the, actually, this thing's really light. It probably it might not even need this bar that I'm going to build. I'm going to build it just in case because sometimes it gets weird. So what you want to do is build a guide rail. You know what? Let's not even do the guide rail because I don't even need this. I can just take this off. That's really light. There's no way that shouldn't be good enough. How long can this extend? It can only extend seven. It needs to go probably a little bit further than that. So we might have to upgrade that, but that's okay. We can test it out right now. Make sure it works. And then you gotta need to do a couple things. Number one, you gotta connect the water cannon up to the water container. So it's gonna pull the water from there magically because everything's connected. Like I said, there probably should have to be pipes here, but because all this wood's connected, that will work. Then we need a switch. So put that switch there. That will activate the first piston. This will activate the piston that pushes it out. And we need another switch here. That's going to activate this piston to push it over. And then we just need to have it turn on. So I do need a sensor here. Constantly starving, thirsty. We need to start growing food. Once we get this watering system up, growing crops going to be easy. Okay, we got the sensor. I still have component kits in case I need to upgrade it. So sensors can be used for a lot of things. They can be used, obviously, to trigger the water cannons. They can be used to trigger the mountable spud guns. You can have them trigger your traps that you build. You can have them trigger opening doors if you step, like, all kinds of things. So how this is going to work is we're going to put... Okay. The sensor is going to have to move. That's good. We're gonna, this is going to be slightly more complicated, I think. So normally you would just put the sensor on top. Since this thing's sliding over, we're going to put the sensor... We can just put it in the middle. Just put it in the... Uh, okay, let's just put it in the middle. Because what I need to do is I need to build something directly over it. You need, you need, it needs to see something. So we're going to build this. We're gonna build this beam all the way across. Well, all the way across as far as it needs to go. We'll just have it connect, that way it's fine. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to have a block in the middle of every plot. So kind of like directly in the middle of the plot, it's probably easier to do this. Just build down, okay? That's directly in the middle of the plot. You wanna have a block here, and then I think it's a two gap block. Yep, two gap block. We're going to do this all the way down until we get to the last plot. So however many plots you have, you're going to do this. And then when the sensor sees this block, it's going to trigger. But what we need to do now is also see where's the sensor going to be when it slides over. So it can also hit those. So we got to make the same thing one more time. Over here. So I think it only moved over one block, right? Yeah, that's directly where it's supposed to be. This one's going to be easier because we just got to connect it all the way across. And then we put these in exactly the same spot. Okay, I figured out what I was doing incorrectly. These have to be connected to this, bam, this. They were accidentally hooked up. They were hooked up to this switch down here. They have to be connected to the water can container. I accidentally connected them to the wrong thing. They can only be connected to a sensor or a switch. So, I might not even need the, se the sensor. Honestly, let's see. Does it work? Okay. Let's bring it back, see if it gets them on the way back. It's getting on the I don't know why it's going... Okay, I mean, it takes two passes by. It's not horrendous. I don't think there's a way to make them shoot faster. I mean, it's okay. We just bring it back, and then it gets them all. 
So, I mean, this is really, really, really simple. You can make them much better than this. I'll have to see if I can figure out why they're not... See if I can make it so it's actually... Um, can get them all at one time. Or so, like, I don't know why it's not shooting faster. Because the sensor speed... Oh, maybe I need to have it on button. Let me try that. Let's see if I have it on button. Does that make it shoot faster? Damn. Oh, there we go. Solution. That's solved right there. Perfect. Okay. It's starting to sag a little bit there, so I might actually want to put a railing underneath of it. Eh, it's probably okay for now. Alright, so let's just go over this really quickly once again. A sensor... It defaults to button and off. That's just all you have to have it set to. In this case, you might have to mess with the range depending on how high the, bo the box is here. So this block is two above it. So that's why I have it set to two. If you're if it's not triggering, you might have to increase it by one or two or whatever, depending on how high you build it. You connect the sensor to the water cannons. The water cannons get connected to the the water the water container down here. And then the water container has the has this pump sucking into it, so the pump is connected. The pump automatically connects, you just have to have a switch on it and turn one. So like I said, since this thing is full right now, I'm not using it. I'm gonna turn it off. Turning it on will just, you'll, it's saying it's red because it's full. So that's for that. And if you ever need to have water to craft something, you can just grab it out of here and bring it in there to make, um, to use that for the making the metal. And then we have a couple pistons here in this case because the way it's set up. The first switch powers the first piston. This piston pushes it out. And then because I only had enough to make two water cannons, I have a second piston, I have a second switch. That's connected to this other piston here that moves it over one slot so that does that that does that and now it auto waters so now i can water the stuff in within seconds because it's now going to hit every crop on the way back and forth so it's going to take a couple seconds so that's going to be amazing for that so i'm probably going to wait now to plant until the day's over so i know that was a long video i'm going to try to i'm going to try to chop out all the fat so it gets get right to the point but we made it, we basically in this episode, we ran into our first farm bot, did not fight him because we didn't have near enough ammo, and I made the automated watering system. So hopefully this helps you with your farms. I do have another video that actually builds like a huge, with a huge automated watering system. I'll leave a card, I'll put a card for that up in the top right now, just in case you want to see that. If you're trying to build this at a much bigger scale, it definitely still works. I've used it on other farms. It had just been so long since I built it that I need to remember exactly what I was doing here. And because you can see all these connections, this isn't even that many connections, the connections just get confusing. You just got to make sure you connect things the right way. So it's usually like one or one connection might be off. That's why things aren't working. So now we're going to be able to water our crops perfectly every time now without any effort. And we might actually be able to expand the farm. If we get more water cannons, I can actually expand the farm out to make more, more crops. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Also, I do stream over on Twitch. There's a link for that down in the description below if you want to see us play some live stream on our survival world. Questions are always welcome there, as well as down in the comments. I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.